Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Mobile Gadget here. I had given you a first uh, impressions and a first look at the Samsung Omnia Windows Mobile phone that I picked up in uh, Singapore a couple weeks ago. I'm um, going to give you a video or two with a few more uh, looks at the features in the device. And then this device is actually, I just made a trade deal to um, get rid of the Omnia and trade it for a Trio Pro device. I just find that I'm uh, much more of a keyboard device than I am a touch device. So I already did a lot of uh, pictures and a short video I believe, of, or, or a lot of pictures but no video of the device. So let's just look at the hardware before I turn the light off here. Here's the uh, Samsung port, it's kind of standard across Samsung for charging, syncing, and the headset. There's a lanyard loop there which is important with this device, I'll show you in a second. There's a microphone opening at the bottom. There is a camera button, volumes up and down on the bottom right. Up here is a menu button there. A reset hole and the power button and a 5 megapixel camera. As you can see this is the white version here. And uh, if I slide it down, not that easy to get the battery out, slide it down. You can see there's the battery, SIM card, and also a micro SD slot, which is nice considering it also has uh, integrated 16 gigs of flash memory with it. And then on the front, we've got a couple of buttons here, send and end, and then a directional pad, which I'll kind of show you some of that functionality in a minute. And there's the, um, what is this? And here's the screen that has... Um, 3.2 inches with 240 by 400 resolution so it's um, kind of it's your WQVGA not high VGA resolution but uh, as you can see they do get more space on it and one thing I wanted to show with hardware is the stylus as you saw there was no stylus silo it's actually <clears throat> connected with a lanyard here that connects to that uh, lanyard loop looks kind of like a mascara case it extends out rather on their stiff. And this is telescoping stylus here, as you can see. It's actually got nice hefts and everything else to it. It's just that it's external and not part of it. I guess they figure that you'll use a lot of uh, finger navigation with it. So let me go ahead and uh, turn off the overhead light and see if we can get a better look at uh, the hardware here. Now, where does I did that? Okay. Let me show you a few things here with uh, what Samsung has done. This is uh, the the main today screen. Now, if I tap this over here, let me go ahead and pull the stylus out so I can get my finger out of the way. And you'll see there's a bunch of widgets along here. If you scroll up and down, you can access the different widgets. If you want to customize your screen, what you do is you just take a widget and drag it over. Now, that's for internet. There's one for notes. So. And let's see, wireless manager. Okay, let me close that. Now, if I want to arrange them, you just uh, tap on them and drag them around, whatever fits, you know. This is kind of the standard I had earlier, calendar, clock, my wireless manager. So there you go. You can, that's your games folder, and that's the internet browser. So there's a look at, uh, at that today screen. And if I was to rotate the device, Let's see, I just did a hard reset, so maybe I didn't set that up. Let's go into the settings here. And as I'll, I do this, I'll, I'll show you some of the settings. Here's some of the traditional ones. There's also one for vibration. Um, so you can set the vibration on or off. And there's some vibration uh, call alerts, too. Let's see, system. Let's see if it's a new screen. Clear type is enabled, text size, I like it a little bit smaller. Just kind of look at through some of these. I'll show you the finger mouse here in a second. Just curious why it did not auto rotate where it did work before. Let me pause it and uh, try to figure out what's going on. It was right in front of my face. Here's the motion sensor. Uh, it's on manual right now, so I'll go back to automatic, and you can adjust the sensitivity as well. 
and there's some etiquette pause so if you turn your phone over kind of like the uh, touch diamond it should mute uh, wake up alarm I don't know if it does it on the ringer and some rotation animations you can change I'll just leave the system default but you can change some of your uh, I'll change it to twist change some of your animations for the uh, rotation so let's go back to the day screen now if I was to rotate now that it's on automatic there we go, we flip. And as you can see on this widgets, the widgets are customizable for either landscape or portrait. So you can manage your widgets there. So back to the widget screen. Now if I tap down here for main menu, which is here, this is the menu by Samsung. There's no way to customize any of these icons here. Um, you know, you've got call log, phone book, and if you look at some of these, they are uh, kind of custom set up. Uh, there's a you know custom looking phone book. I don't want to go too much into my numbers that are there, but the phone book is custom. If you go into clock, you actually see there's uh, some different choices here. There's alarms. Um, there's a world clock that you can manage here. There's a stopwatch and some other things. So these are some custom Samsung utilities. There's um, FM radio. If you plug in <clears throat> the headset there's the touch player and actually what I found was this was able to play videos and I don't know if I uh, have my videos loaded yet update, let me update this uh, real quick and I'll see how fast it takes, it does have a 624 megahertz processor it's been pretty snappy uh, this is looking for video files, I have some on the 16 gig hard drive, a couple movies that I ripped these are actually movies for the PSP format which play on this touch player but not in Windows Media Player so it does support some advanced uh, additional codecs so there we go, say die another day if I was to say play so here it is you switch this way plays there, if you tap on it you get in full screen so video is very nice on there which is one reason I actually considered keeping it um, let's see let's go to programs and as you can see here's the programs and you just scroll through all your different programs you don't have to go into the Windows Mobile programs area settings also will access just the settings that we were looking at earlier and if I go shortcuts this is the screen that is customizable these are the ones loaded by default and if I tap on edit over here I'm presenting with all of my programs so I can just scroll around find a program I want say I want my FM radio well that's on the other one let's see Google Maps so I'll take Google Maps throw it on there and you can scroll up and down and you know once you get more programs there's another one I want to put on there and show show zoo as you can see is loaded there's some other programs that we'll go through then say okay and there we go now one thing I wanted to show is podcast this is a podcast application where you can download them wirelessly to the device kind of like uh, I can do with my S60 device which is great one of the big bonuses for me with this uh, device it does have integrated GPS Google Maps works great if you tap programs here, you're taken again to that uh, program screen. And let's go ahead and exit out. Back to the main widget menu. Now let's uh, go ahead and take another look at programs to show you some of these programs that are loaded on the device. Um, games, nothing special. Whoops. So with programs, um, we have Connected Home is the Samsung one, Digital Frame, the FM radio I talked about there's a Java application for Gmail and Opera Mini that kind of thing a media album podcast an RSS reader shows you a conversion program which is nice and handy another Samsung utility it does support TV out there's a streaming player for YouTube and things like that that you want to stream there's a task switcher there's also the touch player I mentioned there's also a video editor if you tap on that start that program it actually lets you edit videos, make photo movies from photos that you've taken, or create storyboard uh, movies from your photos. So it's a pretty powerful device. Um, 
exit out of there with a ton of different utilities included as well as just the functionality just to show you now if I switch it how fast it switches portrait to landscape and it does it I've tried about 30 third-party applications it does it in every application I've tried um, let me see where's my calendar show you the calendar here real quick so there's my calendar let's go to a month view then I rotate to landscape auto rotates pretty quickly and that's a look at the uh, some of the hardware and software I'll do another video where I show the camera because there is some uh, quite a few options in the 5 megapixel camera that it does have on board the whole put up it was only 60 bucks huh? one thing I just remembered I forgot to show was the um, functionality of the directional pad so let me just show you where it's at right now so finger mouse is utility that's in here uh, on there it says four-way navigation or mouse and then it has sound and vibration feedback so right now it's four-way navigation so say I'm, I'm here I just uh, take my finger go left right up down and then the pushing in on it is a center action as well and then you know back up to okay so it's it's just uh, it's a directional pad that's based on your movement so that's that way now if I go in here to finger mouse and I switch that back to mouse mode you can adjust the speed slow or fast I'll just leave it in the middle and I'll say okay now what you'll see is there's actually a mouse cursor that appears and uh, let me go ahead and go back in there and go to fast and you can see how much it covers pretty much just running my finger around here will get it uh, over most of the screen which is actually handy if you don't have the stylus to use this mouse mode and I keep on bouncing back and forth between mouse mode and uh, and the, uh, the other mode I'm not quite sure what I like best I think if I don't have the stylus connected I like the mouse mode because I still get uh, all the touch functionality that I need otherwise just the, uh, the other mode is fine 